winning in the chaotic, competitive, and complex business world is all about the three Ps, preparation, preparation, and preparation. Now, if preparing for tomorrow is your aim today, well, here in Biznomics, that's exactly what we intend to arm you with. The knowledge required, the insight needed, and most importantly, the market intelligence that helps you to stay ahead of the game. Welcome to your weekend's most profitable 60 Minutes. I'm Tarandu Amarasekara. Now, the Port City Colombo, a hotly debated topic on various circles and forums. However, the economic impact, the economic potential that this project can bring to our island nation is indeed gigantic. But do we really know what's going on? And most importantly, what's the current status of this project? To talk about this, we have a very special guest joining us who is none other than Yamuna Jayaratna, Director, Sales and Marketing of Port City, Colombo. Yamuna, welcome to Biznomics. It's, uh, thank you for having me, Tharinda. It's my pleasure being here. Yamuna, now everybody know, wants to know what's going on because it's a That's hotly right. debated topic, as I said. Even in international media, this has been covered, and we see this Port City project name coming up in various right. forums at various times. That's right. Let's start with a quick uh, status quo check. Right now, what's the current status of the Port City project? Okay, so I think, I think Tharindu, before I go into uh, length on the status of the Port City project, I think it's important uh, that, uh, that we, as the general public, understands what do we mean by the Port City project. Understood. Right? I agree with you because they right? also say it's a special economic zone and there are various terms coming in and sometimes right. the, we see the public having a myth that this is going to be a separate country. <laughs> that's so right. That's let's right. demystify all that. That's right. That's right. Uh, uh, so so uh, it's an excellent question to start with, Tarindu. So, uh, uh, so first and foremost, to understand how this project came into being, right? I'll go back to the history of how this came into being. Being. Um, so with the expansion of the Colombo Port Southern Terminal, yes. right, uh, back in 2010, the wave patterns to the shadow of the terminal changed, causing sand to naturally deposit uh, to the south of the terminal on, or the shadow of the terminal where our port city is right now, right, making further port expansion to the south unviable. Okay. Right. This, coupled with the need for an expansion of the central business district, gave uh, rise to the idea of Port City. So, in fact, this was initially uh, initiated by the Ports Authority of Sri Lanka back in 2010. Yes. Uh, right. Uh, so, ensuing discussions uh, and then uh, uh, with uh, uh, discussions with the Chinese development company that has invested in, in, in doing this reclaimed land, um, uh, Port City was formalized through a tripartite agreement between the government of Sri Lanka, the project company and the Urban Development Authority. Okay. So, the two time. of the parties are Sri These Lanka are, entities. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, uh, so, what is the, the responsibilities of the company that is investing to do the land reclamation uh, are basically complete the land reclamation, complete the breakwater construction that you see now visible as you drive down Gaul Road, Correct. and complete the subsurface infrastructure. These are the utility corridors, etc., that goes into the land. Uh, right. Uh, so when you ask me, what's the current status of the project? Yes. Uh, so as you do see a lot of action happening. That's right. There is. <laughs> uh, so if you if you take now the total committed investment for the entire land reclamation is 1.4 billion US dollars. Wow. Right. It's the largest FDI so far that the country has attracted. And again, I stress this is a foreign direct investment. Correct. It is not a grant. It is not a loan. Yes. Right. Uh, so Sri Lankans uh, do not have to pay back debt to any nation or any entity because this is a foreign direct investment Absolutely. of 1.4 billion US dollars. And it's important that you stress this out because there are so many misconceptions. Are, it's, it's understood. So it's, it's important. I mean, it's my job to really co clearly communicate this because uh, it's imperative that we understand this as Sri Lankans. And that's why uh, we are right? here to give you that platform as well. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's right. So, so basically, Tharindu, um, uh, um, uh, from the, the envisaged investment of 1.4 billion US dollars, approximately 1.1, 1.2 billion US dollars have already been invested by the project company. So the land reclamation 
right, was completed back in 2019. The breakwater construction was completed again back in 2019. And Port City Colombo became a part of Colombo's administrative district in 2019. So really, Port City is an extension to the city of Colombo. Okay. Right? The CBD of Colombo. The, the CBD of Colombo, yes. which was what was intended in the first place, Absolutely. and it is what it is. It is what uh, it is. Right? Yes. Um, so if you if you if you are referring to the Port City project as the total investment committed by the company, um, we are in the process of laying in the subsurface infrastructure. Uh, we believe a majority of that uh, uh, subsurface infrastructure work and the utility corridors will be completed by end of next year. Uh, so. Uh, I can confidently say by end of next year, we should probably be able to service or provide utilities to any parcel of land within Port City. Oh, wow. uh, so uh, uh, we have all the company, as I mentioned, has already invested almost around 1.1 to 1.2 billion US dollars from the total committed investment of 1.4 billion US dollars. So the land reclamation project is nearing completion. Fantastic. However, uh, this beautiful picture, see the picture that you see in all the renderings and the images that you yes, see in the Port City is a city, right? Not a reclaimed land. So, in order for Port City to really realize its master plan vision, yes. we must attract another estimated, uh, I would say, about thirteen point five billion US dollars as direct investments in uh, into real estate that is going to build. These, uh, these residential, commercial, retail, and hospitality parcels. And I'm, I'm happy to say we are seeing uh, keen interest. Understood. So I hope that answers. Uh... Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Now, when you say investment, I believe there is also a catch there that Sri Lankans can't be investing local money. It has to be foreign direct investments coming in. Am I correct? Yeah. So, uh, so uh, we, we come back to the question of, um, why we have Port City, yeah. uh, right? So the idea is, uh, or the, the, the grounding principle, uh, Tharindu, is to attract foreign investment or Absolutely. to bring foreign uh, uh, foreign funds into the country, right? For sure. See, uh, um, uh, uh, Port City was, uh, was declared a, a special economic zone, uh, right? Uh, so going back to... Um, uh, I believe that yeah, the Port City's uh, uh, Port City Special Economic Zone Act was enacted in Parliament uh, in May 2021, earlier this year, okay. right? Okay. Uh, this, uh, following the enactment of the Port City Special Economic uh, Economic uh, Commission Act, uh, Port City was declared a special economic zone the first of its kind in Sri Lanka, right? Uh, so it, it effectively acts as an uh, um, um, offshore destination, right? So really, you don't want the f foreign funds within the country to go into the offshore destination where there are no restrictions on capital and profit repatriation. Correct. You want funds that are outside the country to come, to come in. in. Makes sense. Uh, yeah. Right? Uh, exactly, Makes exactly. Let's talk about the main components of the port city because I mean we do hear about the universities that might that can be there, then various you know apartments, residencies, etc. Right. What will be the main components of this project one, once it's completed? Right. Uh, so so basically, Tharindu, as per the master plan, and when I'm referring to the master plan, I think um, uh, uh, if you would permit me, I will For elaborate sure. a bit more. Yamuna, uh, the forum is yours. <laughs> right. Take the time you so, want and so, share your so, thoughts. So basically, Tharindu. Uh, the master plan was originally uh, designed by a company called Speco of Sweden and then later revised by a company called Sabana Jurong. Now, uh, Sabana Jurong is a 70-year-old company that has master plan global modern metropolitan cities across the world. Okay. including a large part of the city of Singapore. Uh, so why I'm stressing this, Tharindu, is because the extension to Colombo that we're getting through Port City is a master plan city, master plan by the best global experts you can find. Right? So this is the city we are getting. Um, now, if I go into the main components of Port City, um, there are a few strategic parcels, a uh, few features, right? So, uh, uh, so the entire extent of the reclaimed land is 269 hectares, right? Out of this, the developable land portion is 179 hectares. And 91 hectares, which is almost one third of the entire uh, extent of reclaimed land, will be common areas. Areas, right? 
Um, so these include green parks. All the streets within Port City will be green lined. So. Um, uh, take a, think of some of the greener streets that you find in Columbus 7, like uh, Guilford Crescent or some of those beautiful lush greens. So every sp single street within Port City would be like this. Absolutely. There are dedicated bicycle lanes, right, connecting to a network of parks within the city. So why I'm stressing this, Tarindu, is if you take a look at, especially on the back of the COVID pandemic, right, if you take a look at the city of the future, this uh, concept or idea of the 15-minute city Correct. is fast. Urban mobility. Urban mobility, um, where everything you need is accessible within 15 minutes. Correct. And you're looking at green blocks, I mean, cities in Europe are now adopting this green block concept where you have um, a priority given to pedestrians, cyclists, um, uh, with lush green blocks being created within cities. Here we have an opportunity where it's on a master plan and we have the opportunity to build it from scratch, right? So the master plan has embraced and has all these elements, right? Uh, so it these sounds are to me, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds to me like a first world oasis in a third world country. Um, it is a first world oasis. I think uh, Port City's master plan, uh, not only can it compete with some of the best metropolitan cities of the world, uh, I think it really is your best metropolitan city of the world in time to come. Correct. It is the future, basically, Tarindu, right? And um, uh, as I mentioned, the entire investment for the land reclamation comes from, a, uh, from, uh, from an FDI. Uh, right? Um, so it's a tremendous opportunity for us as a country. Um, uh, right? So going back to uh, your question, uh, what the are elements. the key elements? Um, so within the master plan, Tharindu, if you take the characteristics of the master plan, um, uh, uh, there are uh, five distinct precincts that you can identify within Port City. Uh, you have the marina, uh, which I think has uh, caught quite a bit of attention uh, now because it's visible. Uh, there are already there's already a temporary I've operator. I've experienced it. I've been there. That's and I right. Think it's a fantastic experience. Uh, that's right. Uh, so you have the so the marina precinct is anchored by uh, the first luxury leisure marina. Uh, right, and this marina within this marina, you have the capacity to berth about two hundred to two hundred twenty wow. luxury yachts. Uh, right, uh, so we have a massive number of luxury yachts. I think almost 400 yachts that pass by. Luxury yachts, right? Correct. And who owns luxury yachts? Ultra high net worth individuals with the capacity to invest, Correct. not just within Port City, but uh, in anywhere in the country, right? But you need to give them reasons to come and stay. Yes. Right, and you need to get them to come to. Uh, 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 I mean, the the economic heart of Sri Lanka is Colombo. Yeah. Right, this is where all the activity happens. This is where uh, business talk happens. Right, so you need to get them to come and stay in Colombo. Tarindu, right. so that they are in the path of all these investment opportunities, right? So I think the marina really brings home that facility. Um, and then, uh, Tarindu, as you move towards the north, uh, you find the financial district, uh, right? Um, where you'll find the tallest commercial structures. It will also go on to form the main, uh, uh, main retail destination within Port City. Uh, then you have the Central Park Precinct, uh, which will be home to uh, the largest lush green park within uh, within Port City. Uh, so just to put it in perspective, uh, this park would be three times the size of Golface Green. Wow. So that you understand the size. But it will be a lush green park, right? So we've already planted about uh, a yeah, thousand trees, I would say. Uh, and then you have the International Island Precinct, which houses uh, some of the key social infrastructure projects, which I can go on to uh, sort of in detail later. For sure. Uh, right? Uh, and then uh, last but not least, we have the Island Living Precinct. Uh, so five precincts in total. Island Living really brings home the charm of living in a tropical island nation. Uh, and um, uh, the best feature of the Island Living Precinct is the two kilometer uninterrupted beach that has been created 
uh, uh, with the creation of the Port City Reclaimed Lands. And I believe that's lands. opening up soon. We've seen some discussions. We are looking at, absolutely. Uh, yeah. uh, so the thing is, Tarindu, we are an island nation. Uh, Colombo is a coastal town, but when you drive down Gaul Road, uh, you really don't have much access to the beach, uh, uh, do we? Unless it's uh, on the marine drive, but there is also hardly a beach in that. There's hardly a beach, right? So here, Tarindu, what you have is a, uh, a stunning, uninterrupted two kilometer beach. I don't, I'm not entirely sure whether we have the down south either. Um, right? Hard to think uh, of two kilometers. Two maybe. kilometers, Unlikely. exactly, exactly. Um, uh, 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 sort of flanked by beautiful walking promenades. So it's really a master plan city. And uh, uh, I mean, I've, I've, I, I practically live and breathe there. So the level of detail that has gone into the master planning of the common areas and the finishers uh, are absolutely excellent, uh, Tarindo. So. Yamuna, I can see more than anything how excited you are <laughs> about this. You've got me excited. I'm sure you've got the audience excited as well. We're going to continue this very exciting discussion after the break. Stay tuned. We will be back after this short break. This is Bisnomics. <music> Welcome back to Bisnomics, your weekend's most profitable 60 minutes. We are in conversation with Yamuna Jayaratna regarding the very important project, the port city of Colombo. Yamuna, now, what does it really mean that there is a special status granted to this? Because as you said, special economic zone. Yeah. How does that make it different from any other uh, let's yeah. say, invest, allowed investment. Yeah. So I think, uh, to put it in a Sri Lankan perspective, Tarindo, I think we are used to free trade zones, right? Where a lot of manufacturing takes place and you manufacture and you uh, uh, export it, right? Uh, but what will happen within special economic zone or within this particular special economic zone is that it is a services-based special economic zone. Uh, so following the enactment of the Port City uh, uh, Economic Act, uh, right? Uh, uh, the objective of this act really or this framework law that has been created, Tarindu, the objective is to improve the ease of doing business, uh, being able to compete with other hubs within this enclave, uh, right? Uh, um, uh, and also to help position Sri Lanka as a multi-services hub. Okay. Uh, right? These are two supremely important things because... Am uh, I right if I say that this is one of the important steps in transitioning us from being the traditional apparel and tea exporting into the real knowledge economy. Correct. And I think it's very, very important, Tarindo, because um, uh, um, making that switch uh, from what you call a middle income trap, uh, right, uh, to a high value export uh, 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 market is vital, uh, right? And I truly believe we have the human capital and the skills required to do that. But we must retain our talent within the country, uh, right? If we, are to, uh, if we are to make that leap forward. Right now, there's a massive brain right? drain as we speak. Correct. Uh, it, it's a tragedy because, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, our youth that go overseas, they do marvelous, wonderful things, correct, right? Correct. Uh, but that knowledge uh, uh, that is uh, sort of built within this country, uh, somebody else is reaping correct. the benefit. Because we are right? not giving them enough opportunity. We have to create that opportunity, right? Um, so uh, the hard infrastructure, the, the master planning of Port City that we talked about, really gives you the world-class infrastructure within a master plan city that is needed, that is needed. So now that is, that is being put in place, right? Right? But coupled with that, we need to create a conducive, investment-friendly environment, right? Uh, so the, the, the thing about special economic zones, I mean, this is not a new concept uh, if you compare with the rest of the world, right? Special, economics have be, uh, special economic zones have been there for the last 40, 50 years, uh, although it may be a relatively new concept for us, for us yes. uh, right? Um, uh, 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 so uh, the, a special economic zone is a special area. Uh, defined area where uh, uh, you can take uh, sort of uh, bold decisions that are really going to help uh, propel um, uh, 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 certain policies and certain uh, frameworks forward. So if you take the Port City Special Economic 
uh, zone, right? It has uh, certain salient features that have been very, very well captured in the framework law that was enacted. One is Tarindu, uh, 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 single window approvals. Uh, right. Uh, so, following the enactment of the, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the framework law that governs Port City, the Port City Economic Commission was established, right? Yes. So, the commission would serve as a single investment facilitator. And I think this is vital. So for any investor coming in, one window for your business licenses, approvals, incentives, everything. Then there is very specific focus on investment protection, which is much needed. Uh, right, so there's a very strong clause where it very clearly states that any incentive, uh, um, any uh, uh, license approval uh, given, permit given to any investor or any business that established within uh, within this enclave of Port City cannot be amended or withdrawn unless, of course, there's a massive breach by the said investor or that business. Um, uh, so that is very, that's crystal clear. Uh, uh, right, so it gives added investment protection, Absolutely. a stable environment for Correct. a company to invest and conduct their business. Um, uh, um, also, there are uh, no restrictions on capital and profit repatriation, mm. so greater flexibility is permitted. Sure. Uh, right, uh, then another pain point is dispute resolution. Uh, so, one of the key points uh, in the Port City Economic Commission Act is um, uh, within Port City there would be a, 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 a international dispute resolution resolution center that would be established, uh, Tarindu, right? Uh, with the mandate of expeditiously and fairly resolving any dispute arising out of Port City, uh, right? So, so even if there's a need for arbitration of any discussion matter, there will always be a proper party correct, that they can go correct. to. Correct, International Dispute correct. Resolution Center. Correct. Uh, so they Tarindu, don't have to, no right? investor has to worry about that. It will be, it'll be the Sri Lankan courts coming in that will favor the Sri Lankan parties. Not, no worries on no that. Worries. This is no international worries. No worries. Absolutely. And, and the other, other thing, Tharindu, is of course, all these uh, securities and safeties and consistencies are coupled with competitive incentives. Right? So what the framework law really uh, provides is that any business that comes in may enjoy in, uh, incentives or, uh, say, a waiver of uh, corporate income taxes up to a period of almost 40 years. Um, so it does give a framework law, but regulations are being drafted right now as we speak by the commission, uh, which is going to give us more detail in time to come. Sure. Uh, but uh, certainly, Tharindu, this mix of world-class infrastructure within a master plan city. Uh, coupled, first world oasis. It is an oasis. It's paradise, right? Um, what we have been lacking really is the infrastructure, uh, Tharindu. And that's what Port City brings in, brings right? In. Yes. Um, uh, 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 and who gets to start on a clean slate? Uh, so what we have is this tremendous opportunity, right? Uh, coupled with a uh, with a very strong framework law, yes. really focused on improving ways of doing business uh, and and uh, um, uh, promoting investors to come in. You know, a very investor-friendly framework Sorry. law uh, with what we have historically enjoyed, our geographic location, uh, right, and the abundance and the beauty and, you know, everything we talk about as an island nation. So all these three factors uh, really puts Port City uh, um, uh, in a fantastic position, uh, Tharindu. And I think uh, if you're talking about the Asian century, uh, in that context of things, uh, in time to come, Asia would would uh, uh, would be the next economic superpowers, right? Uh, and I think we are already almost there as a continent. As exactly, exactly. Of course, uh, better intra-regional cooperation, I believe, is required. We've got uh, two of the largest uh, giants, our immediate neighbors. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, you know, uh, to, uh, once I mean, I hope that does improve. Uh, correct, uh, correct, correct, correct. Uh, I mean, and Port I, City could be the jewel in that. Uh, uh, well, I hope Port Port City could build those bridges okay, fantastic. Uh, because we welcome investment from anywhere so Yamuna, let's also since you are talking about the legal aspect right. of things the legal structure of the port city yes, now, who right. exactly owns it how do the decisions get made on the direction of the port city right. the strategy What's going on here? Yeah, so I'm very glad that you asked that question, Tarindu. Um, uh, so uh, as per the legal context of things, as per the tripartite agreement that has been signed back in 2016, 
the entire extent of 269 hectares of land that has been created as an extension to the city of Colombo is 100% owned by the government of Sri Lanka. Okay. Right? That is crystal clear. Not this, an is not, inch this, of this land. is not a case of giving, selling our land to foreign countries. No, or... not at all. That's a, that's, that's a completely false, yes. in fact. Right? Uh, the investment for the land reclamation comes from the, the project company, which is Czech Port City Colombo Private Limited. However, the entire ownership of the entire reclaimed land lies with the government of Sri Lanka. You might wonder why would uh, why would somebody invest and not make a return, right? So the mechanism for that Tarindu is, uh, if I'm to explain it fairly simply, uh, is 43% uh, of the land, uh, which are in scattered land parcels, right, have been provided to the project company uh, on a strict mandate, on a 99-year lease, on a strict mandate, and that mandate is that the project company can market these parcels of land to potential investors who would like to invest in the land and the ensuing vertical developments, uh, right, um, uh, 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 and enter into an agreement, but that agreement would be entered into with the government of Sri Lanka, right? Uh, so the government of Sri Lanka would give a potential investor a fresh 99-year lease uh, for them to basically do the vertical development, but the project company would also be a party uh, to that agreement, Tarindu, because the consideration or the value for the land component will come to the project company. Having said that, um, uh, um, uh, uh, there is a certain portion of land, 62 hectares of land, that are under the government's uh, marketing purview as well. Uh, so the government also has an opportunity to market those land parcels uh, and, uh, and uh, really generate some revenue through that as well. Nice. Uh, right? So coming to the second part of your question, Tharindu, uh, right, who governs Port City? Right. So following the enactment of the Port City Economic Commission Act, uh, the Port City Economic Commission was established. Right. Uh, so the mandate of the commission, uh, Tarindu, really is to uh, is to uh, uh, govern all activities within Port City and also to go, go on to form the regulations. And as I mentioned, they are also the single investment uh, uh, facilitator, single window investment facilitator. So these are the responsibilities of the Port City Economic Commission. Uh, right. So the, the point I want to drive home or what I want to, to, to state very clearly is that the entire ownership of this reclaimed land as well as the governance of Port City are all under the government of Sri Lanka. I think it's important that you clear that out, uh, Yamuna, because there's a lot of confusion on this topic. So that's why I thought of asking that as well. Thank you for laying out all the details. Thanks for giving me the opportunity. Absolutely. <laughs> now... With regard to um, allowing investments, I think you did mention earlier that the idea is to attract foreign investments, That's not right. to always use the local money on this matter, but attract foreign investments. Correct. Now, in your experience, from what you're seeing, from the response, do you believe that there is enough investor confidence in Sri Lanka to attract high-level investments? Because let's be very frank here, Yamuna, in terms of even our financial markets, our bonds, Sri Lankan souring bonds, are rated almost at junk level. Yeah. So, do you feel that there is enough investor confidence in or on Sri Lanka for them to come and put their money here? Yeah. Um, Tharindu, it is certainly something that needs to be built, right? Uh, uh, and uh, 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 built in a consistent, uh, continued manner, uh, right? Um, Having said that, Tarindu, uh, I must say for Port City, we have, um, uh, we have already concluded transactions for, I would say, six parcels of land nice. altogether. That's uh, good to hear. Uh, uh, so the marina is, is, is probably one of the first elements that you're going to see active. Um, uh, so that's, that's, that there's something to be said. And also, uh, Tarindu, if you take a more long-term view, uh, right, I mentioned the Asian century. Uh, right, if you take Sri Lanka's position geographically, uh, right, in that, context, in that context, uh, uh, Sri Lanka holds tremendous potential, and there is so much interest in this little island nation because of that. Right, we must not underestimate the potential that we have. Historically, we have held a very strong position in terms of trade. Yes. Right? Uh, now, Asia is becoming strong once again. 
Uh, right? So in that context, if you take a long-term view, Tarindu, Sri Lanka holds a very, very strong position. It simply cannot be ignored. Uh, uh, cannot be ignored. And we as Sri Lankans must understand our importance as well. Right? Um, there's so much discussion around Sri Lanka, primarily because of that. There's so much of interest from different nations because of that, Tarindu. And especially with right? so much of supply chain chocker blocks in the world. Correct, correct, correct. Uh, I mean, we are located in a maritime superhighway. Uh, we connect to most parts of the world within a five to eight hour flight radius. So uh, we, are, we are certainly geographically, uh, we've hit the geographical jackpot, right? Yeah, the sweet spot, uh, as uh, they call it. Sweet spot, as they call it. Um, um, uh, so I, 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 I don't think we've had a project of this scale. Correct. Taredo, uh, that can be attractive enough for foreign investors. Uh, and through my personal experience, having been a part of multiple discussions, Tarindu, the scale that Port City offers uh, and the, the planning and the opportunity backed by the strong legal framework that is now in place, I believe makes Port City a very attractive proposition. Right. Um, uh, so when you uh, when 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 we take this proposition to market, Tarindo, uh, especially in this environment, right? right. Because it is when um, you know, the entire world is uh, uh, reeling from uh, the impact of the uh, the COVID pandemic. Correct. Uh, They're right? looking for investment opportunities, new ones. Correct. And here we are. Correct. Exactly. So Yamuna, we are going to continue this discussion in more detail. We will be back after this short break. This is Bisnomi. Welcome back to Visnomics, your weekend's most profitable 60 minutes. Our focus today is on the port city of Colombo. What potential does this project hold for our economy? And we are in conversation with Yamuna Jayaratna. So Yamuna, one important uh, aspect I believe that this project is going to bring is entertainment. Because That's right. we, hear, we do hear a common complaint about Sri Lanka saying, look, you know, you have the natural resources, etc. But right. when it comes to entertainment, you are not the most exciting destination. <laughs> It's not me who's saying this, it's the world who says this. So the way you see it, do you see the port city as a hub for entertainment? And what kind of attractions are we looking at here? At, at least the potential for. Yeah. Uh, so I think the, uh, the, the infrastructure that's envisaged to come into port city, Tarindu, is really going to bring city tourism, which is... I think almost, let's be frank, almost non-existent for the city of Colombo. Tourists come and they go straight down south. Correct. Right? Uh, there's literally no city tourism within Colombo. Sure. Right? Uh, and I think... I mean, we do have a few casinos here and there, but when we compare with countries like Singapore uh, or Malaysia for that matter. Almost. Uh, and, and, when, and we don't have uh, uh, real global players. Correct. Uh, Tarindu, uh, right operating out of Sri Lanka. Uh, so so uh, Port City really has elements that are going to bring the right audience and get them to stay in Colombo. Uh, right? Uh, and this is the crowd that is going to spend in Colombo. We want tourists to come and spend money in Colombo. Right, correct, and correct. the rest of the country as a whole. For right. Sure, for sure. Uh, so the first element but 50 is. But 50% of our economic activities are centered around Colombo, so we do need them spending. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Right, and Colombo offers a lot more opportunities to uh, spend as well. Right, uh, and you want to maximize that, uh, sure. uh, and by getting them to stay. Um, so the marina, I think, is is uh, of vital importance. Uh, um, uh, Tarindu, because the marina is going to attract the ultra high net worth. Crowd. And for a start, I believe we recently saw the Colombo Fashion Week being held. In that's the right. That's right. That's right. Um, uh, yeah. So it'll be a vibrant destination for multiple events, not just local events, but global events as well. Um, uh, but uh, imagine 250, 220 luxury yachts burst within the Port City Marina. Uh, imagine multi-billionaires coming and berthing their yachts when they are transiting within Colombo and spending a few days here. Uh, right, um, this is going to put them uh, in the path not only of investment opportunities, but they're going to spend time here, right? Uh, so there's going to be a very vibrant, there'll be a yacht club, Captain Airy, uh, flanked by beautiful cafes, um, all sorts of entertainment along the marina precinct, right? So that's going to create a very vibrant uh, environment, and I think it's going to create a bit of a sailing culture as well. 
uh, right? And it's going to give, uh, in fact, Tarindu, uh, uh, we have this operator called Sail Lanka, right? Uh, who, uh, who is uh, currently um, uh, sort of sailing off uh, the Port City Marina. Yeah. So all those uh, 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 catamarans, in fact, that are berthed there are produced locally. Right, they're built locally, so it is going to give rise to a uh, entire new industry. Right, um, so that's that's one aspect in terms of entertainment. Uh, then, uh, Tarindu, um, we have uh, we have the uh, uh, theme resort and entertainment parcel within Port City. Right, it's a fifteen hectare land parcel, the largest single land parcel within Port City, right. where we hope to bring in a themed resort, a family themed resort. Right. Uh, right? Um, in, so, the, in the nature of what we see in, like, for example, the Sentosas and that's all that. That's right. That's right. So that's that's what we're looking at. And you couple that. Jamuna, the way Karindu. you put it, I just can't wait for the party to get started. <laughs> I think it'll start sooner than later, but couple that Tarindu with the authenticity, the culture, the heritage, and the vibrancy that this little island offers. I mean, you couple that man-made entertainment, which is what's missing Tarindu, right? That exciting man-made entertainment with, um, you know, the, the, the complete different environment you get when you go to Nuralia, right? Uh, the culture and the history that you get in the cultural triangle, right? So you couple that with what Sri Lanka has to offer. I think we are going to be the country to beat Tarindu. Uh, right? Such is because the there's such is the potential. Uh, right? So we are really what Port City brings to the table has really been the missing element, uh, Tarindu. So uh, I'm not even mentioning the multiple um, multiple parks that we have within Port City, nor did I mention the two kilometer beach. Uh, so what you, the beauty that you find down south when you go to Miris, uh, Unavatuna, Hikkadua, right? Uh, that is going to be available in the heart of a metropolitan city, the city of Colombo. Right, the same uh, vibe, the same environment uh, within within Port City. So I believe what so. you are sharing with us, uh, Yamuna, is more like the acme on the tip of the iceberg, not even the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> That's right. It's That's very right. interesting indeed. Now, when it comes to the practical question that, that a lot of Sri Lankans want to know, will Sri Lankans be allowed to actually yeah. access this Port City for work and maybe for traveling in for these entertainment facilities? Well, as that now, I believe that you know policies will change. Sometimes plans can change, etc. Yeah. Uh, what kind of a program are we looking at? What kind of a system are we looking at on that front? Yeah, um, I think Tarindu, very simply, I mentioned earlier, Port City is a part of Colombo's administrative district, just like any other part of Colombo, right? Right now, of course, the subsurface infrastructure being, is, lay, is being laid out, so it is a construction site, uh, right, uh, with many hazards. Uh, and right. Naturally, there will be restricted uh, access. Uh, of course, naturally, there is restricted uh, access. Yes. Uh, right. However, as I mentioned, we are hoping to open certain elements where we can secure uh, and ensure that the public is safe and not go into the construction area. Correct. Correct. So, those elements that are in the would be opened fairly mm -hmm. soon. Um, um, uh, however, coming back to your original question, Tarindu, um, uh, uh, as and when uh, we are able to sort of release these areas uh, where it is accessible, which is not a construction site, Tarindu, those areas would be opened. And um, once the city gets completed, as and when it gets completed, Tarindu, of course it's as accessible to the public of Sri Lanka. It is a part of Sri Lanka. It is not a different destination. You don't need any special license sensors or whatever to walk into Port City, uh, right? Uh, so that is that is what it is. Um, of course, uh, just to clarify further, uh, if you are to do a business yes. or to engage in any commercial activity within Port City, then of course, Tarindu, you need to be an authorized person where you can obtain a license uh, from the Port City Economic Commission, Understood. which is your single window investment facilitator. Right? As simple as that. It's as simple as that. <laughs> yeah, well, on a final note, yeah. I believe that uh, you also mentioned the focus of attracting global financial players. And I believe there's a financial center coming up, etc. Now, what will be the incentive for these global financial players to come and start operating in Port City? What narrative are we actually giving to attract them? 
Yeah, I think uh, Tharindu, uh, first and foremost, I'd like to clarify, uh, Port City will be positioned as a multi-services hub. Correct. So not just, we are not limited to attracting financial institutions, um, uh, but it can be IT, BPO, KPO, uh, uh, the, uh, so, the, the, uh, so that area, uh, then uh, of course, uh, financial services, uh, offshore banking, uh, logistics, all these services, Thanidu. Uh, that's where we want to position Port City as, uh, right? Uh, so I think uh, what's important to mention is, uh, based on the studies we've conducted, Sri Lanka already enjoys uh, almost 80 to 70 percent cost advantage, I mean without Port City, right? Uh, cost advantage in terms of cost of doing business if you compare with more mature hubs. Right. Even if you compare with emerging hubs, Tarindu, we already enjoy a 30 to 20 percent cost advantage in terms of cost of doing the business. Right. So with the incentives that are offered within Port City, this would be further enhanced. Uh, right. Um, also, uh, with uh, preferential uh, immigration uh, 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 laws, we are looking at uh, sort of a better visa system within the enclave of Port City. They are being currently being developed, um, as well as flexibility that has been provided for in the Port City Economic Commission Act in terms of labor laws, etc. I think companies would be well placed to attract the best talent uh, into Port City as well. Uh, right, so uh, you've got a uh, 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 very advantageous cost of doing business, right? Uh, you've got availability uh, and uh, availability and Port City being especially attractive to attracting the best talent uh, pool, right? Um, uh, also in the region, Tharindu, uh, if you take the entire region, I think we are leaders and we've been ranked as one of the best in the South Asian region in terms of ICT infrastructure. Right, so that coupled with a master plan city where living is pleasurable, fantastic, everything you need is within fifteen minutes. I think if you if you bring all those elements together, uh, Tharindu, I think Port City Colombo will be a very attractive option uh, for companies to come in. Uh, we need to simply take that message uh, to uh, uh, global service sector entities. Yamuna, you are the, I would say, as the director of uh, sales and marketing, I believe you are the voice for this project uh, in the face of the public, in the eye of the public. I would like to give you this opportunity to say your final words to the public of this country yeah. who is watching right now. Right. Uh, the way forward for this project and anything you would like to share with us, the hope that it brings, inspires. us. The time is yours. Yeah. Um, I think uh, what I do want to... Um, um, to share with my uh, fellow citizens uh, of Sri Lanka really is that uh, what we have with Port City Tarindu is a, is a fantastic opportunity, right? Uh, and the land is there, it's done. Uh, the re land reclamation is complete, it is available, right? Um, uh, 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 we must, um, as a country, as a nation, we have a democratic process in place. Um, we must ensure uh, uh, as a nation and as a people, um, uh, that 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 we uh, push our leaders forward to ensure uh, that we uh, protect and promote uh, and uh, uh, support at all levels uh, projects such as Port City, which can really be a catalyst in taking Sri Lanka forward. And I truly believe, as a mother of two children, I truly believe that uh, if my kids kids have the opportunity to stay within Sri Lanka and work for a, a globally reputed uh, uh, company, uh, you know, uh, 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 in Colombo, within Port City, uh, and still come home for dinner, uh, I, I, I don't think I could ask for anything more. Uh, so I, I, my, my uh, wish and my hope is that um, uh, Port City would be that catalyst uh, for the country. Uh, the, the, and the game changer. The game changer for the country uh, and we as a people of the country will continue to support it. Yamuna Jayaratna, thank you for spending a valuable time with us, sharing the latest updates on the project and clearing so many doubts because this is the next big economic uh, opportunity for the country and it's important that all citizens are aware 
the potential, the way forward and what exactly is going on there. So, wishing you good luck and we hope to see that complete picture that we have shown right now getting completed <laughs> faster with uh, the least amount of obstacles, ideally with no obstacles, but we wish you strength to meet any challenges that you may meet in the way forward. Thank yes. you for joining us and keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Tharindu. If you are a citizen, a businessman or an investor, well, the opportunities are coming up. Stay tuned, stay alert. And as always, Businomics is where you will hear the latest in the Sri Lankan business and economic landscape and even the next big investment opportunities. I am Tarindu Amarasekara and I will see you with the next episode. This is Businomics. <laughs>